Hello everyone, this is Brain's Journey and welcome back to another Information Element Lecture. Uh, this time we're on to the second of the ethical functions. Today we're talking about FI, or introverted ethics. Um, we'll just get right to it. So the alternative names for FI, you'll see this L shape, this rectangular shape, and uh, correspondingly white ethics. This is in contrast to FE, which had the black version and black ethics. This one is called relational ethics because it emphasizes personal attraction, the relations that we form instead of just emotions like FE. Um, and you'll also see it called uh, by the Latin name relatio, or which is going to be abbreviated to R. So the definition, the logical definition, what are we seeing with this element? So FI perceives information about personal attraction and repulsion. Um, kind of the magnetic, almost imperceivable distances between two objects in terms of the subjective opinion of the person, and also what objects and people the individual needs to obtain its satisfaction. This may be emotional satisfaction, this may be perhaps intellectual satisfaction, you know, whatever, as long as it has some kind of sentimental basis in the person. So what does all this mean? What are some examples? Well, let's go over some concepts. Let's expand this a little bit. So, concepts tied to FI. This list is taken from Ibrahim Tensor's list of concepts. You can click the link in the description to see all of them, not just the one for FI. Um, but we have some concepts for FI listed out here, so let's just start with these as we always do. So, for FI, the first one that I wanted to go over is sentimentality. So, FI establishes a bond with an object or a person. It judges whether or not something is adequate for itself or not adequate for itself. And so perhaps if it forms a bond with an object, even if that may be an inanimate object, um, it will still be sentimental to that object. It will still feel like this object has some kind of connection to it, that it's bound to this object, that it doesn't want to let go of it, that it's important for its emotional satisfaction in some sense of the term. And so it focuses on objects that make it feel good, objects that perhaps bring some kind of joy in the person, elicit some good memories, perhaps things that are um, just important to the person in general, the FI will form sentimentality towards it. Another thing that I wanted to look at here is personal bonding. So, unlike FE that strives for more community-based bonding, FI really wants to achieve these personal bonds. It wants intimate friends, people that it can connect to on a deep level, people that they're attracted to, people that are go they know are going to satisfy them in all respects of the term. And so they look for these personal bonds that they can share their emotions with, they can share their feelings with, and without feeling judged in, a, in an environment where their emotions are not necessarily expressed, but understood and felt deeply. And so it emphasizes this personal bonding um, in contrast to FE, which advocates for community bonding. Another thing that I wanted to look at here is sympathy. If the FI user looks at something and feels or looks at an issue, looks at an event, responds to an event, or perhaps somebody's suffering. It may look at that person and with their attraction and repulsion in mind, with all the opinions and the ideals that they have in mind, judge that person as um, you know, worthy of some kind of compensation. This is what sympathy is all about. It's not necessarily going into the other person's shoes, feeling how they feel, which would be more of an FE thing, empathy. The FI user is establishing sympathy. It's establishing that it feels for the other person, it wants the other person's condition to be better, um, but it is not necessarily aware of how they're feeling or aware of the emotional state that the person um, in, in question is undergoing, necessarily. Another thing is emotional sensitivity. So as it establishes its kind of repository, FI, of its personal bonds, its personal goals, ideals, all these things that are sentimental to it, it can uh, become sensitive, it's sensitive to these things as somebody violates a principle that it has or violates something that it views to be important. It may respond in kind. It may respond, hey, that's not okay. You know, I'm sensitive to that. I'm sensitive. I've built up an emotional complex that, you know, kind of is tied to whatever you're messing with. So stop messing with it. You know, so they're sensitive to things that they've built up. They're, they're sensitive to things that are important to them, things that are valued to them. And so if somebody disturbs that, well, they may respond with negative emotions. They may respond in a, in a way that doesn't necessarily... Um, encourage active relations because they don't want their stuff being messed with. Another thing is admiration. Perhaps they see somebody that they want to aspire to. Perhaps they see somebody that they judge as, um, you know, attractive. Perhaps they see somebody that they judge as um, satisfying, something that they want to be, maybe. 
So what, they're, they'll admire people that perhaps they want to strive for, somebody whose goals match up with their goals, somebody whose goals match up with what they want to achieve in life. And so they'll establish an admiration towards certain people, certain people that they find ideal, and they'll, uh, they'll go on trying to emulate them, and they'll go on appreciating what they've done, and they'll go on developing a, a, a sentimental bond towards them, because that's what admiration is all about. And so admiration in this sense is the, um, the attraction towards some kind of figure that they've established as sentimental. Um, another thing that I wanted to look at was character and the judgment of character. So if it sees somebody that it judges, you know, we also have to factor repulsion in here. We've been talking about attraction so far, but FI will also see things as repulsive. It will also see things as not conducive to its overall growth, not conducive to what it feels is important. And so it will judge character. It will just, if it sees somebody's character as bad, it will judge, okay, you're bad. You know, it'll make this judgment in its mind. It may not necessarily say things as such. But in the, in the judgment of the mind, you know that this good or bad kind of um, alignment has been made. That if you see a character and it, it's not behaving according to the FI standards, it will judge the character. It will say, okay, well, because this character, this figure, this maybe even an inanimate object, is not in line with what I view to be important, I'm going to immediately repulse away from it. I'm going to immediately avoid it because it's just not conducive. It's just something that I want to avoid. It's not something that I want to go towards. And so it will make these character judgments, it may make harsh character judgments, it may make slight character judgments, but they're always related to emotional complexes and how the, uh, the user establishes bonds with other people. Another thing that I wanted to look at is pity. So pity is another thing like sympathy where, you know, the, the person is not necessarily in the shoes of the other person. They're not necessarily feeling what the other person is feeling. Um, but, but they're kind of judging their character and judging whether or not their character should receive some kind of compensation or whether their character should receive some kind of negative consequence that they judge these things. So pity is more like a negative sympathy. Is that with sympathy you more see this person judging this other person as, oh, I feel bad for this person. Oh, well, I want this person's condition to improve. With pity you're more like, oh, you know, foolish you. You know, you're doing these things and they're causing you trouble. And so... Uh, you know, I, I, I pity you. I, I, I pity your actions. So it's, it's like a negative sympathy in the sense that this is, is establishing a, a set of bonds, a set of sentimental relations that um, are negative instead of positive. Um, another thing it, that's kind of tied in with emotional sensitivity is hurt and offense. So if something strikes it negatively, um, it will respond in kind. Like I said before, it's emotionally sensitive to these things that are important to it. And so if other things hurt it or or offend it. It may, it may strike back. It may say, look, you've offended something that I feel dear. Or maybe this will be in relation to another person. If somebody is hurting a person that FI has come to value, FI has come to be sentimental towards, perhaps it will go, um, perhaps it will say, oh, you've hurt that person. How, how, how bad of you? you? You've offended this person. This is not okay. You know, you can't be doing this. FI will make these judgments and it will say these things. And it will process things in a way that establishes its attractions and repulsions toward other people. And so hurt and offense plays into the way that it judges other people's character and what people are doing to other people in relation to the, in the, to the person that's subjectively observing these things. Another thing is trustworthiness. If it establishes a bond with another person, meets another person, it must immediately judge their character based on their actions. It must observe, okay, well, what's this person doing? Is this person in alignment with myself? Is this person not in alignment with myself? Is this person hurting other people that I value? Is this person being kind to other people that I value? And so it will kind of have this measure of trustworthiness. How much do I trust this person? How much am I going to let this person into my personal circle? How much am I going to express around this person? These are all things that it judges. And so it judges the psychological distance that it must maintain between this, this person that it's judging. The trustworthiness, the, the how much it depends on this person, how much it will tell this person. Mainly psychological distance is what you want to keep in mind for the trustworthiness aspect. And the last thing that we want to focus on is good and bad. I already kind of went over this before and it's almost self-explanatory at this point based on the amount of relation-based judgment I've been talking about. Um, but yeah, good or bad, if it judges something as good, it may make a subconscious judgment. It may make a conscious judgment. It may say, that's good, that's bad. It may let you know those things. Um, but if it's not letting you know those things, if FI is not clearly um, showing any signs of good or bad, you know that it's always making those subconscious decisions 
whenever it's going through, maybe it sees something that it perhaps doesn't like and it doesn't say anything. Maybe you don't observe anything because it's not expressive, um, but it will be making a good or bad judgment either way, um, regardless of whether they're aware of that or not. So we've gone over some concepts, now let's see how those concepts are manifested in behavior. So what does FI look like behaviorally? Well, it strives to make and maintain personal relationships with others. FI often has a goal that it wants to achieve for personal satisfaction. That's the goal, is personal satisfaction. How much satisfaction do I want? Do I want emotional satisfaction? Do I want physical satisfaction? Do I want intellectual satisfaction? Um, all these things are not necessarily related to the domains that they're in, but they're related to how the person expresses sentimentality. So intellectual stimulation you may not see as something that is, is connected to ethics, that's connected to emotions, but it may be connected to this person because that makes them feel valued if they're intellectually stimulated. Maybe if they find somebody that intellectually stimulates them, that makes them uh, you know, more likely to, to um, maybe that makes them happy, maybe that makes them satisfied. And so all these things that can get stimulated are things that FI strives to maintain behaviorally. So it will uh, search for these things that it can get satisfied, and the way that it searches for that is with personal relationships and close, intimate bonds with individual people. So another thing is it conveys information in terms of how they were affected by something. So it may say, if it likes something, it may say, that's pretty good. If it doesn't like something, that's pretty bad. It may not say, that's good. It may say, I like something. It may say, I don't like something. It's going to convey things in terms of how it, as a subjective observer, is experiencing the event, the I, the ego. I like this. I don't like this. This thing makes me feel good. This thing makes me feel bad. You may hear a lot of that. You know, it, it, it could depend, but there's going to be a lot of that kind of judgment, whether it occurs in the person's mind or it expresses itself in the person's language. Another thing is, Decisions are based on how they feel and how others in relation to them feel. So we went over this before. It's uh, kind of like this invisible magnetic attraction to something. It's going to make decisions. Perhaps it says, well, do you want to fit into this friend group or do you want to fit into that friend group? And they'll make this, this decision. Well, I don't like that friend group. I like this friend group because they make me feel valued and I make them feel valued. And all these things that um, are related to their relations with other people. And so they'll make these decisions based on how they connect with others on an individual level. And so it knows and understands psychological distance between two people. This is important. It um, is related to trustworthiness. It is related to affectivity. It is related to contact and bonding. Um, if it meets somebody and it understands how much it values them, behaviorally, if an FI, if an expressed FI user um, gets to know somebody, they'll immediate, become immediately aware after a certain point of time, what can I do around this person? Um, how much are they going to stimulate me? How much are they going to satisfy my goals, my needs? And so they'll, they'll understand, you know, how much can I let this person into my life? How much can I tell this person? What can I tell this person? Can I tell this person specific things? Can I tell this person anything? And so they'll, they'll judge whether or not the psychological distance between two people is strong or weak or anywhere in between. And the last thing that I wanted to, to touch on here is that FI will occasionally make personal sentiments known in order to judge compatibility with others. And so this ties into psychological distance as well, because it focuses on, okay, well, if I let people know a little bit of who I am, a little bit of what I value, and a little bit of what I need, then perhaps if they respond in kind, then I will have made a friend, and I will have made somebody that um, I can depend on, somebody that I can depend on for stimulation, satisfaction. And so they'll, they will let these personal sentiments be known in order to receive some kind of feedback that they will judge as either good or bad, like I said before. So we've gone over FI, we've gone over the definition, the concepts, all the things that are related to it, and um, how it looks behaviorally. So if you enjoyed this lecture, um, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Next lecture will be on TE, Extroverted Logic, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next video.